Alma acknowledges a concern that Corianton has. He says, My son, I perceive there's somewhat more which doth worry your mind, which ye cannot understand, which is concerning the justice of God in the punishment of the sinner. For ye do try to suppose that it is injustice that the sinner should be consigned to a state of misery. I think I can relate a little bit to what Corianton is worried about here. We have a very kind of, a very finite, mortal, limited perspective in this life, and yet the actions that we perform here have eternal consequences. So how is it just then that someone could slip up here and they're going to be punished for eternity? Mm -hmm. This seems to be Corianton's question. And Alma's answer comes in the previous chapter, and it has to do with the doctrine of restoration. Alma defines it in chapter 41, verse 3, men should be judged according to their works, and if their works were good in this life, and the desires of their hearts were good, they should also at the last day be restored unto that which is good. And if their works are evil, they shall be restored unto them for evil. And Alma then goes on to explain more about what this entails. And I think his answer is really important because it gets at the very heart of why we have religion in the first place. My favorite explanation of this chapter comes from the Latter-day Saint philosopher Mark Raffal who explains that sometimes we think of the final judgment as if it were God giving us a final grade. We mm -hmm. show up at the judgment bar and you either find out if you passed life or if you failed life. And if you passed, you go to heaven. And if you failed, it's not so fun for you for the sometimes rest of I eternity. I wish it was like that. I'm like, oh, okay, just pass, fail. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but what Dr. Rathall explains is that Alma is teaching something quite different from that. If at Judgment Day I'm happy, it's not because God is blessing me with happiness for having checked all of the right boxes. If I am happy at the last day, it will be because I have built myself into the kind of person who can be happy. Mm -hmm. Regardless of circumstances, mm -hmm. yeah. the, you, you have just allowed yourself to find that happiness and joy in life. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and I think you find it through certain kinds of habits. Okay. So being a happy person, requires certain things. You need to be someone who um, knows how to live in relationship with others, how to be self-sacrificing and listen attentively and build genuine relationships. And so at the judgment bar, what happens is God restores you to the kind of person that you have built yourself into over the course of your life. And by the same token, if at judgment day I'm miserable, Alma teaches it's not because God is punishing me for having gotten mortality okay. wrong, it's because I constructed myself into a certain kind of person who didn't have the habits of joy. I think this then is why Alma leads us to verse 10, where he reminds us that wickedness never was happiness. Not because God punishes you for being wicked, but because wickedness does not build the habits that allow you to be happy and joyful in this life or the next. Mm -hmm.